Hey guys, how you doing? This is Steven. I'm back with another tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to be uh, rendering a wire frame uh, of your mesh and uh, you know use it for exporting uh, to, for your demo reel or, or whatever. Um, there's several different tutorials out there but this one is uh, actually pretty easy um, and it gives you know really good quality and stuff like that. And, um, you're probably thinking, you know, Steven, you know, there's like tons of tutorials out there. They're, they all say the same thing, you know, use, you know, Maya's vector renderer or use uh, your, um, you know, play blast or, or whatever. But, um, you know, the Maya vector render is, is probably the best way to go. But unfortunately, uh, if you're like me and you're using uh, Maya 64 bit, uh, running a 64 bit uh, operating system, um, you're shit out of luck because um, the Maya Vector Renderer is only packaged for um, Maya 32-bit. Um, there is a way around it, you know, if you're running a 64-bit um, operating system, you can install a 32-bit Maya and use the Vector Renderer that way, but unfortunately you're um, only cut out, you've got that 32-bit cutoff where, you know, you're only able to use 3 gigs of RAM with 32-bit operating system rather than with the 64-bit you can use up to you know God knows how much. Um, I also noticed when I was when I did use because that that's the what direction I went when I did use the vector renderer, um, just rendering one image took forever. I mean rendering this image of, of my A10 uh, A10 Thunderbolt, I, it it took a long time to render just one image. And uh, so you know say if you want to do an animation you know like a, like rotating around your model um, you don't have forever to you know render this thing out um, you can also go the the, the route of um, you know rendering out a play blast but the quality is incredibly crappy so I did some digging and I found a really nice uh, little tutorial it's incredibly simple and it renders out a wireframe incredibly fast and it just uses mental ray so regardless of be you being on a 32-bit or a 64-bit operating system um, you can use this regardless so uh, no let's let's get started okay so let's uh, get rid of my background here and uh, actually I don't need any of the lights so let's get those out of the way Okay, and first thing you want to do is you want to, um, you know, you can use any shader you want. You can use any of the colors that you that you have on there. Like, I've got like 10 different shaders on here. But the thing is, you have to go and modify each shader, or actually each shading group. So, um, me, I'm going to be compositing this over a final image. So, uh, for compositing, I want the actual color of my jet to be black. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Window, Rendering Editors, uh, render setting. Oh, nope, not that one. We'll use that later. Uh, Windows, Render Editor, and Hypershade. And I'm going to create a new shader. I uh, just use a Lambert, simple Lambert. I'm going to make the color black, and I don't want any highlights, um, so I'm setting the diffuse to completely black. And I'm just going to... I know there's going to be a, a, um, uh, an error here. At least I'm pretty sure. Because I did this before and it had an error. There it is. Error while parsing arguments. Um, if anybody knows why it does that, please let me know because I haven't been able to figure it out. I'll go online and there's like a hundred different answers of why it does does it. But the way around it I found out is if you actually duplicate your mesh, so Control D, and all you have to do is Shift Select so it toggles the uh, original and the duplicate. So now you're going to uh, eliminate the original and so all you have is a duplicate left and you should be able to select and assign the material and there we go so that that's the only workaround I found for it so now we have um, black Lambert uh, there will be no reflections you can use a, a, um, a surface shader that'd work fine so let's double click double click on our Lambert and right up top here where it says focus and presets right next to where it says Lambert uh, there's an input and an output the output is right next to the preset so we want to click on that and it brings us to our attribute editor for our um, uh, Lambert shading group and so we have you know shading engine shading group 
sample. Um, next one down is shading group attributes, and then there's mental ray. So we're going to click on mental ray, and uh, the tab that should already be open um, is called contours. If it's not, it goes mental ray is the main group, flags then contours. So uh, what you want to do is click on enable contour rendering, and uh, the contour, this color here is whatever that's the color that your uh, um, um, wireframe is going to be. So I want white. Of course, you know, I don't want it black because it being on a black Lambert, you won't be able to see it. So sticking with white, alpha is one is fine. Um, absolute width, you want that checked. It's already checked. So and the width, I found, depending on the size of your project, um, either 0.5 or 0.25. So I, 0.5 works good, you know, on this one. And that's it for that. And then we can just go back up to uh, our render settings. So uh, this it's right next to IPR. It's the small little um, uh, clacker with the uh, two dots next to it. And if you hold over, it should say render settings. But you know, so uh, you want to go into your mental ray tab and make sure you're using mental ray. Uh, if you're not, if you don't have mental render mental ray in your render using tab, um, I pull down, go over to Windows, uh, fifth one down, uh, settings and preferences. All the way down to Plugin Manager, and search for the one that says Maya Maya to MR Maya T O M R dot M L L. Excuse me, and make sure that's clicked, and it should automatically update your render settings so Mental Ray is now uh, selectable. So select your Mental Ray, and just make sure that for primary render and secondary effects, ray tracing is both selected. You don't have to worry about final gather or global illumination. And you want to go down, it's about fifth from the bottom, it says contours. I'll select that and open it up. And the first thing you want to do is collect, uh, uh, check and enable contour rendering. And under um, the next one down under contours, it says oversample, set that to three. Um, filter type Gaussian filter, which is the best, you know, best uh, filter that, that there is. And under draw contours by property difference, uh, it's a second one down called Around All Polyfaces. And select that, and that should be it. So let's. Oh, and I forgot um, why what my original uh, image here actually had a motion blur on it. So make sure you click off your motion blur um, if you have motion blur on it. And that should be it. So let's give it a test render. And it's rendering a huge size. 1600 by 800, which is almost HD, and it took eight seconds, eight seconds to render a really nice wireframe um, image of my uh, of my A10 Thunderbolt. And again, it only took eight seconds. Really nice render, and that's it. So uh, I've I've got a little prepared, a little animation. Um, of my A10 uh, going from wireframe shows an occlusion pass <coughs> that use global illumination stuff ambient occlusion and then merging the two I'll put that in the, at the end but the actual three second animation took less than I think less than five minutes to render out a wireframe pass and if you're using um, your vector renderer for something this complicated you'd probably have to set your you know set my to render overnight go to sleep, wake up in the morning, and it'll probably still be rendering out. Um, so I think that's it. And see how much time I got here. Wow! Nine minutes. Excellent. Um, so I'm not going to talk for another one minute, so I'm going to go, and if you guys have any questions or requests, uh, just send them to me, and I'll see what I can do. Alright, see you guys later. Bye.